Welcome back to another Godot Recipes video. I decided to make this video after seeing a lot of questions in the community about how to handle kinematic bodies interacting with rigid bodies. It can definitely be tricky if you don't know what you're doing and you might see some surprising behavior. So let's get started and see what we can do. So here we have a very generic kinematic body platform character with moving and jumping using move and slide to execute the movement. And then I've added this ball and these blocks are rigid body 2Ds. And everything is left at its default settings right now. So if I move against the ball, I'll push it. And the same with the blocks. And you might think, well, that's looking okay now. But the problem will happen if, for example, I try and jump on top of the blocks. Or if I try and push them into the corner, you will see that things are not behaving the way you would think that they should. We get tunneling and we get overlapping and these bodies are not behaving correctly. So how do we fix this? If we look at the code, we're getting the user input and then we're applying gravity and we're using move and slide, passing it the floor normal so that we know what the floor is and we can use is on floor to process our jump. And this is very common. This is what you'll see in most tutorials. And it's a great way to get a basic kinematic body character working. But if we go and look at the documentation for move and slide, you'll see that there are a lot more parameters, especially this one right here. Infinite inertia is true by default. And that's what's doing the pushing when we run into a rigid body 2D. It's telling the rigid body that an infinite mass object has run into it. So it should just, it should just move no matter what. And that's what's causing the strange behavior you're seeing. It also means that the mass of the rigid body is getting ignored. If I made that circular rigid body have a much, much higher mass, it would still move exactly the same when my kinematic body pushed it. So we're ignoring the rigid body physics when we push it, which is what's causing our problem. So we want to set that value to false. So here I've added the other parameters. And since GDScript doesn't have named parameters, we do have to include them all since we want to go to the last one. So I'm just using the defaults that were already there for the other parameters. This is just what they uh, are by default. And I, but I've set infinite inertia to false. So let's see what happens when we run. So now when I move, I can't push these at all. My kinematic body just stops when I hit the rigid body as if it was a static body, right? And now I have no way to move these. So that solved part of the problem, but now I can't push them at all. And the way we fix that is going to be when we detect a collision with a rigid body, we want to apply an impulse to it. So we're going to add a new parameter up here to our kinematic body and this is going to be our this is going to represent our inertia I'm just gonna call we'll call this inertia and I'm gonna set this equal to 100 this is gonna help us calculate the force with which we'll push the rigid body and so now down here after the move and slide is when we need to check to see if we have collided so we'll stick this down here at the end. And with slide collisions, you can have multiple collisions. So we have to loop through them using get slide count in case there was more than one. And then if there was, then the collision object, the kinematic collision 2D object, we get with get slide collision and on that index. Now we have our collision, and then I'm going to put all of my rigid bodies in a group. You can also test if it's a rigid body, but I'm going to say if collision.collider is in group, and I just called it bodies. So if I've hit one of the objects identified as a body, then I want to apply an impulse. An impulse is like a, a kick, like when you hit a baseball with a bat or when you kick a soccer ball. So collision, 
Collider apply central impulse. And let's zoom out a little bit so you can see everything. So we're going to use the collision normal and I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to put a negative sign to invert it because the normal points out of the body. I want it pointing into the body and I'm going to multiply by that inertia that we added. And now I should have a nice push on this body when I push up against it. So see how I can push the blocks. The blocks do not tunnel through each other. And if I jump on top, I can just stand on top. So already you can see a huge improvement in the behavior. And from here, there are lots of things you can do to tweak and adjust exactly how it works to get it to work the way you want it in your game, adjusting the physics properties of the rigid bodies and adjusting the inertia value up here to different values to see how that works and get it working the way you want. But hopefully this helps you in solving your kinematic body to rigid body interactions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.